Um, so typically you'll be getting your injections ready in a medicine room. Um, you always wanna make sure it is not a sterile procedure. So you will just be putting on regular gloves. With your interdermal injections, you will be using a tuberculin syringe. Tuberculin syringes are typically from 0 0.1 milliliter up to one milliliter. Needle gauges range typically anywhere from 14 gauge up to 31 gauge. The higher the number of the gauge, the smaller the bevel or the opening of the needle. So a 14 gauge needle will actually have a, a larger opening. Those typically 14 and 16 gauge needles are typically the ones they use to um, insert into a, a vein when someone's giving blood. Typical for tuberculin is um, 25 gauge and up. With sub Q, those are typically um, uh, anywhere from 27 gauge and up to 31. So again, the higher the get, the higher number the gauge, the smaller. So the 31 is going to have the smallest bevel. 14 is going to have your largest. Um, tuberculin syringes are typically the only syringe that you will use with an intradermal injection. So we're going to act like this is our tuberculin medication. This is the medication that's given when you go for your TB skin test. The sites for intradermal injection are typically right here in the forearm area. You will not want to insert the needle over a visible vein or vis visible um, um, bruise. You want to try to find an area that does not have, like right here, you would want to not insert it directly over that in case it were to go into the bloodstream. Anytime with intradermal sub-Q or your intramuscular injections, you're going to take an alcohol um, swab. I'm just going to show you now. Of course, we'll do it right before we do the injection. You always clean from the center out in a circular motion. You don't want to ever fan a site, you want just to let it air dry. You never go from the outside in, because if you do, you're just moving debris to that center part where you're gonna actually do the injection. So always from the um, inside out. With um, our intradermal, our angle is going to be from five to 15 degrees. It is actually almost at an angle, almost parallel just slightly up from the skin. So we're gonna act like this right here is our little forearm area. With an intradermal injection, we're actually going to pull our skin taunt so we can stabilize our skin because what we're doing with the intradermal is gonna be injecting that bevel into our slightly, into that first layer of skin and not inserting the whole needle. It says intradermal, you're going into the dermis, that first little layer. You will actually pull the skin taunt. You're going to use your index finger underneath the syringe, your thumb on top to stabilize your syringe. Five to 15 would be slightly, almost parallel. Five would be just off from the skin. If you've got someone who has, you know, a lot of skin, that might be more of a 15 degree angle. Bevel up just enough under that skin that the bevel is no longer showing. I'm gonna stabilize my needle and push. So again, your bevel's up. You pull the skin taut. You insert the bevel into the dermis just enough that that is hidden and inject the medication and you make a little bubble, or we also call it a wheel, W-H-E-A-L. You'll also hear some people call it a bleb. With any injections, you're gonna check the order. Um, you're gonna go in and you're gonna always have two identifiers with the patient. You would check their armband. You could ask them their name and their birth date. 
Uh, it's always a good idea to ask patients about any allergies. Most new medications will have a little plastic top that you're actually gonna pop off. And when you come um, to your skills lab on this, we will all do that together. You pop the top off, all vials are gonna have a little rubber stopper. When you remove medicine from a vial, you have to insert air into the vial first before you're actually able to get the medicine out. Things you're always gonna check with your vials and any medications is your expiration date on the vial. Um, you're gonna look to make sure and compare it to your MAR to make sure you have the right medicine. When I'm inserting air into my vial, I'm actually going to take my tuberculin syringe. Most uh, tuberculin medications will be say 0.1 or 0.2. Let's say my order says to give tuberculin 0.2 milliliters. Remember our tuberculin syringe goes from 0.1 milliliter up to one milliliter. So say I have my order is tuberculin 0.2 milliliters. I'm gonna pull the stopper back to 0.2. Now you'll notice that the stopper has a top ridge and a bottom ridge all the way around the syringe. You measure your medication from the top line or the top ridge. So you're gonna put that top at 0.2 of air. I'm gonna take my alcohol swab. Even though I've just popped that top, it's a good idea to go ahead and get in the habit of cleaning the top. Now I usually will leave my alcohol swab on top. That lets me know, yes, I've cleaned that. So, with your tops, you pull straight out, straight off. You always want to inject air to air. And I'll show you why in a minute. So I'm actually, I'm picking this up to show you. You put your needle down. Now you always want to put air into air. If you don't, if you don't insert the air and you go ahead and turn your vial, if I inject that air in the, see all the bubbles? I'm just adding bubbles. I'm just adding air to that vial, which might make it harder down the road when I put air in and I may not be able to get my amount out I need. So, again, I'm gonna show you the correct way. You have 0.2 milliliters of air. So I'm going to inject air to air. I never want my needle to go all the way into the fluid. Inject my air. Then I'm going to directly turn the vial and pull back to 0.2. Again, I inserted 0.2 milliliters of air. I'm going to get 0.2 milliliters of fluid. Now I have air. So you'll see, you've probably seen a lot of people thump and that air should go back up to the top of the syringe. If not, you can move it up and back into the vial and slowly come back. And you're gonna get all that air out. Okay, and now I'm back to point two of medication. You always want to remove it away from you because if not, it could spray medicine on you. So you want to remove the vial and the syringe away from you. And then you're going to uh, put your cap, you're gonna scoop, and then you can put it back on. Now, we'll talk about later on, once you inject a patient, you never, ever, ever recap a needle like I just did. That's only done um, when you have your medicine and this has not been inserted to the patient. Um, so now you're ready to go give your injection to your patient. All right, you're gonna learn how to mix insulins. Two different types of insulins from two vials into one syringe. They do make preparations now where um, the insulins are in a pre-filled syringe for the patient to use. However, it is those are more expensive pre-filled syringes. 
So you can go ahead, a lot of doctors now will order the regular insulin and the MPH insulin separate. More hospitals are going back to this method as well, again, because it is less expensive. So this is known as a sub-Q injection. So we're going into the subcutaneous tissue. Usually, uh, typically the most common um, medications that you see sub-Q are insulin and heparin. So we're gonna go ahead and show you how to do the um, two different insulins. You will only use an, a syringe for insulin called U100. Okay, now heparin, which is what I mentioned is the other medicine, you will use regular syringes. But insulin can only be given in a U100. Typically most, um, uh, insulin syringes are orange tipped, but it depends on the manufacturer. When it has U100, that means it can hold 100 units of insulin. They actually make a um, other syringes, other U syringes. There's actually a new one now called a U500 that actually holds uh, if someone has um, an insulin pump and you're trying to fill something that's going to use larger amounts of insulin but the most common one you'll see in the hospitals is a one excuse me u100 insulin so we're going to go ahead and take our syringe out now if you'll notice the difference remember the tuberculin syringe was 0.1 to 1 ml u100 or any insulin syringes are in units they are not in milliliters that is why you can only use this for insulin. So, um, typically with uh, sub-Q injections, it is a 45 degree angle. However, if you have a larger patient, because, you know, subcutaneous, if you'll remember subcutaneous tissue, you're giving it where? You're giving it in the adipose tissue. So the sites for your sub-Q injections. The most common site is the abdomen. Insulin syringes are given from one inch or more from the umbilicus. Heparin has to be given two inches or more from the umbilicus. But anywhere you have adipose tissue, subcutaneous tissue in the abdomen. The other areas that you can give, the second most common is back of the arm, right here back of the arm, top of the um, thighs, kind of the top outer part of the thighs, and also the love handles in the back. Um, I will tell you that it's more um, painful. And also in the back of the shoulder blades, if you can pinch up some adipose tissue, that's another area, another area that is very sensitive. The most common areas, again, are the abdomen and the back of the arm. Uh, 45 degree angle, I mentioned, unless you have a large patient. And then, depending on the size of the needle, which is very, usually very tiny, very short. When you pinch up that adipose tissue, if you know you have enough room, enough area for that needle, to stay in the subcutaneous tissue, you can do a 90 degree angle this way. But 45 degree angle is the typical for sub-Q. Your regular insulin is the shorter acting, shorter acting insulin. Your MPH is your intermediate. The reason they have to be mixed is some patients need uh, something short acting to act very quickly when the blood sugar is high, but they need help on down the road in a few more hours and that's where your MPH comes in. Regular insulin is clear, MPH is cloudy. MPH also is typically in the refrigerator, whereas regular insulin is typically room temperature. That will depend on the facility where you are um, as to where they are stored. Reg uh, another fact about regular insulin, regular insulin is the only insulin that can be given IV. Again, regular insulin is the only one that can be given IV. NPH cannot be given IV. 
longer acting insulins that we'll talk about later on, like Lantus, cannot be given IV, only regular. 